going to take a quick tour of Europe. So fasten your seat bells. Hopefully there'll be no turbulence. It depends what questions you ask me at the end of the session. Um, yeah, we're just going to go and have a look around uh, the European markets and see um, who the main players are, where, where there are potential markets for garden products, uh, and what the channels of distribution are. So I'm going to do a, f a very quick tour of some of the main some of the main regions. So I've kind of split it into five different areas. We'll start with uh, Scandinavia, quick mention of the Baltics as well. Then look at France and Benelux. Then Germany, Switzerland, Austria. Then uh, a quick overview of Eastern Europe and Russia and, and then the Mediterranean markets. So, uh, and, and what I'm going to be looking at each of those areas is what's the size and scope of the markets. What are the principal features of each region, things that influence sales there, like whether it's climate or um, culture or whatever. Uh, a quick overview of the leading retailers and the channels of distribution, uh, some of the exporting issues related to those markets, and then sum up how Gardenex can help as far as UK suppliers are concerned. So um, just quickly put some figures together just to give you an idea of uh, the sizes of markets uh, and, and the potential audience for products. Obviously, here in the UK, we're around um, about 64 million. As you can see, EU generally is over 500 million population. Germany, uh, which is the biggest market for garden products, is 81 million. Um, but looking at some of the areas, Scandinavia, we tend to think of them as quite small markets. Um, but actually, together, there's 26 million people there. Benelux is very close to the UK. A lot of uh, business traditionally done from the UK to uh, the Benelux markets. Uh, and then you've got Italy and Spain. Uh, and then, obviously, you compare markets such as Russia with 146 million. There's a lot of people out there who we can potentially be selling our garden products to. Quick overview of the size of the European market. Uh, there's a German group called IFH who put the sales of garden products for. Uh, this was at the time where before Croatia joined, so a couple of years ago, and the size of the market 87.3 billion euros, of which about 62% was plants and biochemical products, and around 38% garden hardware. And uh, Germany is by far the largest market with about 18 billion euros, France 7.5 billion, and the UK market is generally recognized to be about 5, five billion pounds. A um, couple of other examples, the Dutch market about 4 billion, is that right? <laughs> we have a Dutchman in the audience. And then you've got our markets such as Ireland, Belgium, they're smaller markets but still not to be ignored, 600 million plus. So, um, we're just about to fly into Oslo. I think it's 16 degrees today. It's raining. Um, Scandinavia, it's, it's, we all know of it as being a, a market with its cold climate. It's a short season. Um, and many of the garden centers are actually closed all winter long. They don't necessarily open until around April or Easter time. Um, but, and, and, and uh, uh, as a, a corollary of that, there's, it's, it's a very strong market for houseplants. I think Norway is recognized as the market which is the strongest uh, market in Europe per head as, in terms of houseplants and things. They're all, always looking to bring color into their houses in, in what is a long, dark winter. Um, the good thing from the UK uh, exporters' point of view is that English is spoken widely. Lots of uh, people watch UK, UK TV programs, including all the garden enhancement uh, if, uh, programs. And many, uh, particularly in markets such as um, Sweden and Finland, many people have their second homes, their summer houses, uh, and indeed a second garden, which they furnish and have their barbecues and so on. And they are also relatively prosperous, but they do, pay, they do have high VAT levels, often around 25%, and high taxes. 
Uh, so, details of some of the key players. There's uh, this uh, Finnish group, uh, Kesko, K Rauta. They have stores um, in most of the Scandinavian markets and also in the Baltic states. There's Big Max, Silvan, Ditas, uh, and the German groups such as Bauhaus and Hornbach. Uh, they're quite strong in, in uh, markets such as well, Bauhaus in Denmark and Sweden, Hornbach particularly in Sweden. Then you have the local-based co-ops in each of the markets. You have uh, country-type stores such as Grand Garden in uh, uh, Sweden and Agri-Market in Finland. Uh, garden centers, as I said, many of them are closed during the winter, but you do have one big chain, Plantagen, who now have over 100 stores across uh, most of the Scandinavian markets. And then you have buying groups, um, buying cooperations such as Bo Grunt, which are in Denmark and Sweden. Um, so uh, there's a whole lot of potential out there in, in terms of uh, dealing with um, uh, retailers. And it's a particularly good market. I used to work in the greenhouse business, so I know Scandinavia is one of the most important markets in Europe for propagation products and greenhouses and also landscaping. So France and, and Benelux, you could probably tell me better than I can which of the, where the, uh, the, the main possibilities are in France. It's the largest EU country in area. It's got a varied climate. You've obviously got the south, which is, has the Mediterranean climate where maybe the focus is on leisure rather than um, uh, working in the garden. Um, but it's uh, always been a, a huge market, and you've got leading players such as Leroy Merlin and Castorama Bricamarche on the DIY side, and, and some big uh, supermarkets which also handle um, garden products. And then you've got the so called Lisa stores, which is, is it Libre Service Agricole or something like that. It's uh, what we would think of as country stores, chains like Gambier. Um but uh, although it's a huge market, there are many UK companies who find it difficult to break into. It's so important that you have the French language for all forms of communication, for packaging and so on. Um, but it still remains one of the most important markets in Europe for garden products. Then you have Belgium, where they're king gardeners and DIY. DIY is 68% of houses have a garden. It's a very key gardening market. Those are some of the key players there, Brico, Hubo, Gamma, and Macro. And you have AVV, which is a group of 250-odd stores, which are, again, they're maybe more in the kind of country store type category. Um, yeah, Belgium is, is one of the markets closest to us, and as in England, it rains a lot. I used to travel a lot to Belgium, and every time I went to Belgium, it rained. Um, and then you have the Dutch market. Um, whereas in markets like Germany and France, it's the DIY sector which is very, very strong, normally with about 30% of the market. In the Dutch market, the garden center sector is still strong, around 30%. And you've got players, like, oh God, if I start pronouncing these names, someone's got to start laughing. Intertain. Uh, Overwicht and uh, Garden Retail Services, I can at least pronounce. Uh, those are some of the main players in the, on the garden centre site. And then DIY, you've got Gamma Praxis. Hornbach is one of the German groups that it's getting into the market. And I think Bauhaus is opening a store from Germany. Uh, they're coming soon. Um, main, main factors here are... Smaller gardens, it's, it's quite a, a, a crowded country and lots of urban populations. Um, unlike in Scandinavia, in Scandinavia you will hardly ever see a pet product section in a garden center. In, in uh, Holland, lots of them will have pet products, as indeed in France too. It's quite a popular thing that pet, uh, pets are featured, pet products are featured in garden centers. And uh, it's a hugely competitive market. Germany, so Germany is the largest uh, market in Europe, nearly 83 million people, one and a half times the area of the UK. Has around 15 million uh, detached, semi-detached homes and uh, lots of Schrebergärten, the, the allotments as well. That's quite a big thing, particularly towards the eastern part of the country. 
sales at 18 billion, and then you've got some of the huge DIY stores like OB. OB has about 550 stores uh, across Europe, and I think 350 odd in Germany itself. And then you have Bauhaus, Hornbach. And on the garden center side, you have Saga Floor, which is a buying cooperation, and Dana, which is a, a chain with about 110 stores. Um, some of the other big DIY players are Torm, Hagebau, Helwig. Um, so uh, the DIY sector is very strong, uh, at least 25% of the garden business. 57% um, of houses have a garden, but there's a lot of rented accommodation in, in, in Germany, even in, in the housing sector. Uh, and Spoger Gaffer is the big... Um, is the big trade show finished about 10 days ago in, in Cologne. That uh, attracts visitors from 108 countries. So just taking a little while to, to look at Germany, it is the biggest market. Um, the thing, I, I used to drive a lot around Germany and I, I was always, I did the worst thing, I was always late for meetings. You should always be very punctual when you go to meetings in Germany. But I always underestimated how long it took me to get to do distances. And there's a couple of examples. Hamburg to Munich, nearly 500 miles. Um, there are a few things to note if you're exporting to the market. Uh, they've always been, uh, even as a student, I remember being told off of putting the wrong packaging in the wrong bins in, in a student household. And I mean, who's tidy in a student household? They're, they're very hot on uh, recycling, and it's important to have the green dot if you're uh, on your packaging if you're exporting to uh, Germany. German language is al always important. It's one of the most competit competitively priced markets in Europe. I remember we took a, a mission of UK companies out to uh, visit some stores uh, just over 10 years ago uh, with Gardnex. And I remember one of our, our group coming to me. We were in a store looking around and the guy saying, is this actually the, the purchase price of the products? And I was saying, well, the clue is this is a store where you go and buy your products. It's very competitive. You have the likes of Aldi, Lidl, and some of the big coffee shop chains who will have particular promotions on, on gardening or other items with, with incredibly cheap prices. Uh, yeah, punctuality is very important. Uh, formality, use of surnames, even within the company, they will call each other by, by their surnames rather than their first names. In Sunday, I don't know what as Brits would do in Germany on a Sunday because you're not allowed to mow your lawn. You're, you, you don't wash your car. Um, so we, we would have a tough time living in, in Germany. Again, once I had a, a, a friend come over from Germany one day and, uh, to the UK and the guy was mowing his lawn next door and she was about to go out and stop him because she said he can't mow the lawn on a Sunday. Um, standards and technical regulations, uh, there's things like the product safety law and, and the fact that you, particularly if you've got electrical products and so on, you, you will probably have to get them approved to have a chance of selling them into the big stores. Um, getting paid, a lot of the big companies will want you to pay cash discounts for so-called early payment, which might be after 30 days. Um, and just to highlight the fact that there's all kinds of services through UK Trade and Investment. They do publications on doing business in Germany. I think they've got Germany country information uh, here at the information desk. And there's all kinds of serv general services from to help you export to markets such as Germany. Then uh, quickly heading towards the Alps and up into Switzerland, Austria. Um, so there are Alpine markets with shorter spring season, cold winters and hot summers. A few of the key players uh, are the likes of Baumax in Austria and Jumbo and Coop Swiss in, in uh, Switzerland. A few of the garden centre companies are Bella Flora, Austria, Schilliger and Meyer in, in Switzerland. Uh, many of the German, big German DIY companies and indeed uh, garden centres uh, are, have a presence. Dana have a few stores in, in Austria. Um, one point to notice, like Switzerland is not in the EU, so you need things like EL1 documentation. And some of the regulations there can be 
harder to meet. And in fact, we have a Swiss buyer who's just... <laughs> and of course, one of the best distributors in the market is Neogard, who are standing at the back. Um, and of course, the transport costs from the UK are quite high. Uh, then uh, head out further into Eastern Europe. I mean, they're growing markets, but they're growing from quite a, a, a low base. The main ones are the likes of Poland and Czech Republic. Uh, but you've got um, many of the big European DIY uh, retailers have expanded into Eastern Europe in recent years, uh, including many of the German companies as well as the likes of Castorama and Leroy Merlin. The markets are, as I said, growing, but they're very competitively priced and transport costs are high. Uh, we, we at Gardnex, we produce a, a lot of market reports. We did some a few years ago on, uh, on markets such as Russia, Poland, Czech Republic and so on, because there's very little published information. Uh, and we have had some buyers from, from those markets come to our Meet the Buyer days. Uh, the Russian market, yeah, it's huge, 140 million plus people, uh, and uh, German chain OB is growing there, and there are some kind of homegrown Russian DIY chains. Um, the Russians have love their summer houses, their summer homes, or their weekend homes, the dachas, uh, and there's strong demand for, for some of the smaller goods such as seeds and so on, but it's not exactly the easiest market to export to. Then finally, let's go somewhere where it's, oops, where it's nice and warm. Uh, I think it's 31 degrees in Athens today. We all wish we were there. Um, so Spain and Italy are perhaps the main markets. They've got large populations. Uh, but obviously with their Mediterranean climate, it's often leisure, leisure and garden watering products which are the strongest. And some factors bear in mind, like in Spain, only around 11% of households have a garden. And 65% uh, of the population live in flats. So there isn't the same level of home-owned home, home -owned detached houses as there is in some of the other markets. A few examples of the leading DIY and garden centre retailers. Italy, uh, DIY chains, again, Obi have a presence there. Um, and Brico Centre, which I think is linked with Leroy Milan in France. But generally, the DIY market there is quite fragmented. Um, and, of course, some of the Mediterranean markets have had uh, difficult economies in recent years. So where are the main opportunities for UK exporters? Um, in a lot of the presentation, I've talked about some of the big retailers. Uh, for many of them, you will need uh, a distributor to serve those retailers. Uh, you, so you get some distributors which might serve the big multiple retailers. Um, the good thing about a distributor, they handle the logistics, they, they hold the stock, uh, and, and they, uh, they have all the contacts within those particular markets. And at Glee, uh, we've got distributors here at Glee at the moment from markets such as, well, we've seen as the Swiss ones. We've got Swedish, Finland, France, Spain. I've also seen Romania and Hung Hungary uh, are here. Uh, they're always on the lookout for new products from the UK. A good hunting ground for UK companies is the mail order and internet sales companies because they are looking for things that aren't available in their big DIY chains. They're looking for things that are a bit niche, maybe a bit quality. Uh, regular visitors to uh, Glee uh, are companies such as Gedna Puchka, who unfortunately are not going to be here this year, uh, but they're going to be along for our Meet the Buyer session in June. Uh, Vashbear, who are here meeting some uh, suppliers tomorrow in our um, Bias Connect sections. Then you have some companies who kind of specialize in British products. There's uh, the, a company called the British Shop in Germany and British Garden Austria, who, as the name suggests, they focus very much on selling British uh, products. And we have uh, Richard Ward, uh, I think he's over tomorrow from... Ward's Garden Badaf Fazant, he's an Englishman who's been selling UK products in Germany for, for many years. 
Then other good potential, if you've got quality high-end products, then it's, it's some of the big high-end garden centers and shops and department stores that might be your potential uh, audience. So how can we help you identify um, customers overseas? If you want to uh, see a grown man cry, then, then say, I have a European distributor now. I always hate hearing that from UK companies. Europe is, is, is a huge market. It's, all the markets are very different, and apart from the differences in language and culture and everything else, um, you could never realistically have one distributor who's serving the whole of Europe. Uh, for instance, there are 24 official EU languages, um, and in markets such as Belgium and Switzerland, and Switzerland, obviously in Belgium you've got French and Flemish and uh, an area with German speakers. Switzerland you've got uh, German, French and um, Italian. Um, one of the things that's very important is to have packaging, packaging that's robust enough to send products all the way around Europe. You've got to have in uh, languages on your instructions and, and in many cases you will often need to be able to uh, communicate uh, in the language of the market that you're trying to service. Uh, documentation, it's not as bad as when I first started in exporting but you still have issues particularly if, if countries are outside uh, the EU such as uh, Norway and Switzerland. Uh, always bear in mind different public holidays, shop opening times and cultures. Um, I remember first when I first travelled to Germany, I'd planned out a trip uh, where I was going around garden centres and I'd got a whole itinerary for, for a Friday, only to discover that many shops close at about 2 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Um, bear in mind there's transport costs, VAT costs very... Uh, very much from, uh, I think the lowest is around 16% and the highest is 27% in Hungary. So uh, that can have an influence on the final, um, final uh, consumer price. Then there's different technical and customs regs, even inside the EU where we're, we're all supposed to be uh, selling goods to the same standards. That isn't necessarily true. Um, you need to be shipping on Euro pallets. There's issues on timber packaging. Um, and if you're selling into Germany, you need the green dot uh, packaging, which I've already mentioned. And then there's horrible things like INCO terms and interest stat. Um, a lot of these export-related exp uh, expressions are things that we explain in our A to Z guide, which I'll come on to in a second. But payment terms and delivery terms, they can vary a lot between different markets and it's something that we can we can help you with so we provide general practice advice on exporting all kinds of exporting issues and on exhibiting overseas we take groups to the main main trade shows overseas and we always give lots of advice and practical help uh, we can provide buyer contacts we have a huge database of information uh, we do lots of publicity, so whenever we take uh, UK companies to shows, we produce a preview leaflet which is sent out to, to buyers in the markets of the sh uh, where the shows are taking place and beyond. Um, we uh, also provide show discounts at some of the overseas shows. We have a huge database, so around 11,500 companies are on there. Uh, member companies can avail themselves of that information for a very small charge. So you can, if you're looking for distributors in Finland or garden centers in Germany, we will have a whole load of buyer contacts as well as the company contacts for those markets. We hold Meet the Buyer Days regularly, um, about three or four times a year. Um, Participants recently have included uh, the likes of Gerner Pertzka uh, in Germany, Grand Garden in uh, Switzerland, Aveve in uh, Belgium, but even from as far afield as Dubai, and recently we had someone from Canada. At our next event in October, we have buyers coming from Switzerland, Romania, and Iceland, and maybe one or two to be added. Uh, we get you grants. Uh, 
for for UK companies uh, that meet the SME criteria uh, f uh, from UK Trade and Investment, there's grants. Uh, European shows this year it's fifteen hundred pounds, and beyond that it's two thousand pounds, and we help to administer all that. Uh, the dates for the Gaffer Show next year, the fourth to sixth of September. That's the show that attracts buyers from all over Europe. Um, export advice, we produce an A to Z guide which takes you through all kinds of aspects of exporting. We provide a consultation service, so when you join, you can come and uh, talk to us about which markets you want to uh, get into, and we can kind of help guide you with that. And we have a helpline for inquiries. And we produce a directory of members which is sent to thousands of buyers across Europe and beyond uh, each year. And we produce sales leads and news bulletins. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more and you'd like to get one of our member packs, come and see us at the Buyer Center, which is uh, immediately uh, behind this wall. And that's where we can be contacted. So thank you for your attention. That was a quick whirlwind tour of, uh, of Europe. We're just about to come into land in Birmingham International.